All right, William. Let's do this. I've got your comments pulled up, and I've got the scriptures pulled up, and we're going to compare the two. So you say, of course, the Noah story is written. We're going to prove all things. 1 Thessalonians 5.21. Of course, the Noah story is written to us for understanding. It's written for us for understanding. It's not written to us. If it was written to us, then you'd need to go ahead and find some gopher wood. Good luck with that. No, you know this. You know that it's written, when you said for understanding, this shows that you know. So you know that the, the, the Noah story is not written for us to follow. It's written for us to learn, you know, for understanding, like you said. So that's pretty good. Save means to rescue or deliver. Sure. It is never a spiritual conversion in scripture. False. That's just false. Um, Acts 2.38, for the remission of sins. That's for salvation. People had killed Jesus. That's what the first gospel sermon tells us there. And they wanted to know what they needed to do about that. Now, he had just told them to call on the name of the Lord to solve their problem. That's Acts 2.21. Uh, they didn't know how to call on the name of the Lord because they, after he told them that they killed Jesus, Acts 2.36, they said, what do we do? Acts 2.37, he told them how to call on the name of the Lord, which is repentance and baptism. It's how you appeal to his authority to be saved to solve your sin problem. So that that's 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 a false statement there. It is never a spiritual conversion in Scripture. It's just wholly false, W-H-O-L-L-Y, false. It does not mean that a person becomes a child of God. That's literally how they became children of God. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, we're only Christians if we do what Jesus said we must do to become Christians, children of God. It's always used to rescue a child of God from a false teacher or teaching or error. Now, that's false. Uh, that's false. We're commanded to expose false teaching, which is what this post that you're responding to does, um, Ephesians 5.11, and, and we're supposed to rebuke it, uh, correct it, and that's 2 Timothy 4.2-4. 4, 4. Baptism means immersion. That's what baptizo means. Yes, immersed. Occasionally, it means in water. Um, you said occasionally because you reject water baptism for salvation. That's why you said it. Uh, there is one baptism, whether you you haven't responded to that fact yet. Ephesians 5, about 4, verse 5, by the time that rolls around, Ephesians, there was only one baptism. There was no more Holy Spirit baptism. There was no more baptism of suffering like Christ went through. There was no more baptism of Moses in the sea and the cloud. There's no more Jewish rit ritual mikvahs. No, there is one baptism by the time Ephesians 4, 5 rolls around, and there is only one today. Okay. Occasionally, it means in water. No, that's false. Um, from Acts, in the book of Acts, it's it's water and it's Holy Spirit baptism. And it was never Holy Spirit baptism after Acts chapter 10. Never. And baptism by fire is hell, which we don't want. In Acts, it usually means in the Holy Spirit or, or into Christ. Okay, if, if by two, if by usually you mean two, then yes, but no. Mm -mm. It only happened twice, Acts 2 and Acts 10. It's the only times. And baptism into Christ is in water. That's the only way you're going to get into Christ. Galatians 3, 27, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. They submitted to water baptism. How do we know? Because it's a command. And verse three, chapter 3, verse 1 says that they obeyed. Uh, Romans, same thing, exact same thing, in fact. They obeyed that form of doctrine delivered to them, Romans 6, 17, by being baptized. It's water, water baptism, verses 3 and 4. Uh, so with that in mind, let's look at 1 Peter 3, 21, which, yes, let's do that, which is the only verse in Scripture that says we are saved by baptism, which means it's enough. If God says it once, it's true. That's enough. The ark is a picture of Christ. False. The door is a picture of Christ. The ark is a picture of the church. All of the saved were in the ark. All of the saved are in the church. There will be no saved people outside of the Lord's church. Jesus said, I am the door. There was one door of the ark. Jesus is the one door into the church, the one way of salvation, John 14, 6. The I am the door verse. I don't have that right there yet, so we're going to look at it. I am the door. That is... Uh, John 10, 7, I should know that. Then Jesus said to them again, Most surely I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. That 
chapter is pretty potent. All right, Noah and his family were God's people before going into the ark. Yes, because Noah had faith enough to obey. That's what his belief, that's what his faith looked like. He believed so much. Noah being warned, moved with fear, and built the ark. Hebrews 11, yes, he was because he was obeying. That's how we are God's people, is by obeying. When you combine your belief with obedience, you have biblical faith as God defines it. Amen. They were immersed, baptized into Christ. They were not. Nobody was immersed into Christ until Acts chapter 2. The water is a picture of the word of God. The water was the judgment on the whole world. So, okay, maybe. God's people were in Christ resting on the water. They were in the ark. Uh, they were saved through water. That's what actually verse 20 says. Eight souls were saved by water, through the water. And they the water killed all the, the damned. The, all the lost people that wouldn't obey God and get on the ark, they had the option, but they didn't do it. Um, those outside the ark were not God's people. That's right. There was no way for them to get into Christ. Well, nobody got into Christ until Acts chapter 2. Uh, the same word of God that saved God's people judged and destroyed those outside of the ark. You said of Christ, but it's outside of the ark. I know this is not a popular view. Well, it's not biblical. But the alternative seems quite strange in view of many other passages. The real clincher here is what most everyone misses. I haven't read any of this. The verse concludes by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's why baptism saves you. I'm so glad you said that. That is consistent with, consistent with Romans 5.10. We will be saved by his life, resurrection. That's very good. Now, I want you to note something there. When you say something that's biblical, I'm going to say yes. So I'm not against you. I'm for you. Something few people stop to realize is the Word of God never says that Christ died to save us. The first verse that came to my mind was, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While I'm pulling that up, let's just do uh, 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21 as it pertains to Romans 6 and going through that resurrection. So eight souls were saved by water, and just like that, baptism now saves you. It doesn't wash the dirt off your flesh. Instead, you get a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's through the resurrection that we will be saved by baptism. But we have to go through the resurrection. So who's done that? Well, Paul asks in Romans, don't you know this? He starts in verse 3 by saying, don't you know this? And then he tells us that we are with Christ through baptism. You can't be saved without being with Christ. It actually says we're with Christ through baptism. He actually says, don't you know this? Only the ones who are baptized are united in death with Christ and raised to walk in newness of life. Ah, going through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, John 3, 16, God said, loved the whole world. He gave his only begotten son. That, that was to save us. Uh, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, Romans 6, 23. Um, he's the propitiation for our sins, not only ours, but the whole world. That's 1 John 2, 2. Um, yeah, and then Romans 5, 8. God showed his love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So he, he did die for us, for our salvation, to save us from our sins. So I'm not sure where you're getting that, but we love you. I've sent you a message. Uh, I have a series of teaching questions that are cumulative. They build on themselves, and they are shared in love. Okay? It's, it's pretty amazing, and I encourage you to test me. I'm no authority. I'm just Paul, just a Christian. First John 4, 1, try the spirits. There are many false prophets going on into the world. So what I'm trying to get you to do is try what you've been taught against the authority of Scripture. So you'll have a, a teaching question. You'll look at the question. The verse will be referenced, and you look at it. You'll be like, Psh, well, that's the answer to that. And then it builds. And I guarantee you will learn something. You know that we need to study for the rest of our lives in order to learn from God by learning from His Bible, which is living, right? We can never stop learning from it. So I encourage you, step up. Test what you've been taught against the authority of the Scriptures. I'm for you. My name is Paul, and I'm a Christian, and I love you in a let's-go-to-heaven-together kind of way. You like that? I do. Let's go to heaven together.